today's guest is the author of the last law of attraction book you will ever need to read, which is one of the best-selling books on Amazon right now. Genuine and sustainable impact is one goal that he holds above all others through his various projects. Welcome to the show, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm great, Toby. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited for this conversation today. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest on Mirror Talk Podcast. I'm so excited, like you said, also super excited about all the things I'm going to learn from you today. So for, for a layman out there, first of all, can, we, um, can you explain what law of attraction means? How do you best explain law of attraction to a layman? Yeah, so I mean, the way I would put it is law of attraction is based on the premise that everything is energy. Your energy, I'm energy, um, the devices we're speaking on are energy, including our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And all energy vibrates at a certain frequency and like frequencies attract like frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, and with that understanding in mind, I mean, law of attraction is like attracts like, but more importantly for us, if we understand that everything has frequency, including our thoughts and that it can vibrate something to bring it back to us, mm -hmm. we can intentionally and strategically choose thoughts, which will lead to feelings that will ideally and hopefully result in better events, better circumstances, and better outcomes in our lives. Yeah, that's great. That's a very, very good um, explanation for law of attraction. Like just energy. Like I, I read in your book, you talked about, you know, us being like magnets, like we attract things that we, you know, things that we think about or things that we want to ourselves. Yeah. yeah, you know, you think, and that's a great way of putting it. If you think of yourself as a magnet, um, just attracting whatever you're putting out there, not only does it, you know, I would say it works, but even if you don't believe that or you're not sure of it, it's still putting you in a place um, and an invitation to just be more positive. And, you know, law of attraction or no law of attraction, whether you believe in that or not, there's so much power to that where, you know, when you're more open, when you're viewing the glass as half uh, full rather than half empty, mm -hmm. you're going to be more inspired to better ideas. You're going to be looking for better um, situations. You're going to think on your feet. You're going to come up with, um, with better um, ways of handling things. You're going to attract and, and motivate the right kinds of people in your life that will help you in your business. If you're running a business in your life, it'll be easier to meet somebody. If you're looking to meet someone, like all these things will unfold in the right way. If you're leaning more towards the positive and towards the negative, because no one wants to be around someone who's negative and then they certainly don't want to help them out. Oh, that's true. So what inspired you to set out on the journey of studying the law of attraction, you know, writing your very successful book about it? And how has all of this um, changed your life? Mm. Well, you know, the interesting thing is I learned about the law of attraction back in 2004 as a, a very young, struggling entrepreneur looking at any modality I could find, you know, anything about positive thinking, personal development, whatever I could to kind of sort out and, and find my way to success. Mm. Law of attraction was one of many. And to be candid, it had its hits and its misses, and it didn't seem very reliable to me. I find out a couple of years later that I was the one who was unreliable. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I learned that lesson the hard way because 2008 rolls around and I had a really bad week where I lost my business and got dumped by my girlfriend over text message all in the same week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's in nice, only yeah. three days, I'm like, okay, that's 90% of my life I've got to get back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to look in the mirror really close and say, okay, something's not working here. Uh, how do I fix this up? And, you know, basically I had this weird epiphany of like, well, the law of attraction thing, it seemed to work whenever I actually did it, at least it started to work when I, and then I, if, you know, it stopped when I stopped doing it, but it seemed to work when I was actually doing it. So I got really stubborn and really indignant and just said, you know what, I'm going to go in all in once and for all, which is really just a fancy way of saying five or 10 minutes a day of gratitude or visualization, no matter what, meaning if things get better, if things get worse, I don't care. I'm going to keep doing this. Yes. And P.S. I don't care what happens, when it happens, how it happens, why it happens. Mm -hmm. I don't care about any of that. Oh, I'm just going to, I've got to do something. This is the direction I'm going in. And mm -hmm. I had this really um, amazing experience where like things just got better. Like two weeks later, I felt better, which is saying a lot with a broken heart. Three months later, I'm in a way better brand new relationship. Mm -hmm. Four months later, I'm making more money than at any point in my life before then. And six months later, everything is different. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm waking up happy and fulfilled. And I learned that whatever this law of attraction thing is, you know, whether you can explain it or not, it works when you work it. And it was only 11 years later where I was like, okay, I want to do something new in my business. What inspires me? And can I do where to be candid? I won't get bored if customers come right in and ask questions. I won't get tired of engaging in this way. 
-hmm. And I'm like, all right, well, let me finally give myself permission to hopefully add something new to the conversation, especially mm -hmm. when there's like a thousand books out there yeah. and hopefully give people something that they've never seen before in that it becomes like an invitation for them to finally sort this out for themselves once and for all, finally use these methods for themselves. And then they won't even learn from me or my book. They'll learn through their own life experience, just like I did, that this thing works if you are in harmony with it and you give yourself the time, space, and patience to just follow through and see where it takes you. Yes. And why is it the, the last law of attraction book you will ever need to read? Why is it the very last one? Is that right. a promise? So <laughs> So notice it's not the last one you ever will need to, that you ever will read because people might still make a choice to do it after, but it's the last one you'll ever need to read in the sense that I, I believe any law of attraction book worth its salt is hopefully going to explain the law of attraction in a user-friendly, easily consumable way. Mm -hmm. And I also think any law of attraction book worth its salt is hopefully going to offer methods that are also easy to use, easy to implement. And I would hope that I've done this with this book, but what I also wanted to do was hold the mirror up to the reader and explain to them what's going on with them. Why do they, why do we all get excited by this content, start to use it, start to get results and still stop? I figured if I can show them what's going on, I can help them catch themselves in the act, help them stop doing that. And then they get an opportunity to use this content in an easy way and a consistent way, they will get results themselves. And again, once you've gotten results in your own life experience, nobody can take that away from you. And hence, you'll never need to read another book again, as yeah. long as you follow through on this one. Oh, that sounds awesome. That sounds great. I was going through um, your book on, on Amazon. I was going through like the very great reviews. I'm going to place the, the link to the Amazon book on um, in the show notes for this episode. So anyone who's interested could just click on the link or copy the link and maybe order a copy of, of your book. That would be so great. I was going through like, um, you know, the preview of the book and I read about, is it the perfect ice cream? where you talked about, you know, people starting out something, not being successful with it, then stopping, or, you know, not seeing results, then stopping, or, you know, um, not continuing with their, um, with the process in order to get the results that they desire. So what would you say is the importance of consistency with the, with the law of attraction? Say that one more time, please. What would you say is the importance of um, consistency, like being consistent with um, a, a, an habit? Or... Oh, like what, what's the, the key to, to making that happen and to being consistent? Yes. So for me, and you know, it's, it's funny you brought up the perfect ice cream because I, I bring that up in the book. Um, I, I love using physical examples because it really clicks in people's minds, just like you were saying magnet before. Mm -hmm. And um, the example in the book was like, you know, imagine someone they're going to the gym and they don't like going. What if you handed them this, this uh, quart of perfect ice cream and say, listen, it's got all the good qualities of ice cream, mm -hmm. none of the bad. And all you need to do is take one spoonful a day of this ice cream and you get the body of your dreams. Mm -hmm. Well, no one's gonna say no and nobody's gonna fail because one, let's pretend they enjoy ice cream. If not, you can say cookies or pizza or whatever, but all right, they enjoy it. And number two, it's just a spoonful. So for me in the context of law of attraction, the key for all this, what I'm trying to say is that is um, you can be consistent if you have methods that fit into your day and that are actually enjoyable to do, that you look forward to them. The mm -hmm. key to consistency, if you're not super motivated or you can't, you can't muster that motivation, the key then therefore is having something that you enjoy so much that it becomes a choice rather than a chore. Mm -hmm. It becomes something that you get to do rather than something that you have to do. Because I know, you know, all American football lovers out there, I've yet to find a, a football fan who has looked at me and says, hey, Andrew, you mean I have to go to the Super Bowl this year? It's like, no, no, they're excited. They want to go there. And by that same token, the whole key is in choosing simple gratitude or visualization or scripting methods that are so fun that you wake up, you're like, cool, this is only going to take five minutes and I enjoy this anyway. This is why I do it every single day. And therefore, that's where the consistency comes from. And through the consistency, that's where the actual manifestation come from come from yes so for people out there who have you know heard about love attraction before but never really studied this how would you what would you say are the misconceptions the common you know misunderstanding about love attraction out there from your vast experience yeah so a lot of people will they make a couple of mistakes and by the way i am no better than anyone else the reason i can articulate these mistakes is because i've made them countless countless times and one of the big misconceptions is people think that um well one um, that there's no action involved. 
which there is, it's, it's inspired action though. The key about this is you're gonna take action in the world, but if you're taking action out of a, a lackful attitude, well, then you're just reinforcing energetically the lack of what you have. And that's why it's not happening versus inspired action where you're motivated and excited. and like, yeah, this makes sense. That's where things come. So uh, misconception is like people think that there's no action involved. There is, it's inspired. But the number one mistake that I think people make that they don't realize is they do these methods to get a result. And um, it's probably funny to hear me say that because most people are like, well, yeah, of, of course I'm doing the method to get the result. Why do you think I got the book? Why do you think I read that other book? Why do you think I'm doing this? And it's like, here's the, the little subtle distinction. When you're doing a method in order to get the result, well, that means you are putting your focus and intentionality in a place of lack where you're lacking the thing. You're reinforcing energetically and through your psychology, the lack of what you want. And then therefore you're, you're inadvertently holding it away from you. What I would say instead is do the method for the sake of enjoying the method. Because when you're doing the method for the sake of enjoying the method, then you're feeling good while thinking about what you have or what you want or both. And then you're emitting the signal of having it and then it comes to you. So you do the method to get the result, but you do it in an indirect way. If you do it directly and you're reinforcing that you don't have it, you're stuck in place. I say the, what the secret really is, the misconception people don't realize is just feel good while you're doing it for even just five minutes a day. And you're gonna build up massive momentum energetically and psychologically because positive thoughts and emotions are so much more powerful than negative ones. So even if you have a bad, um, you know, event, an undesirable event happen that day, you've already done the work that day and the momentum will build up for you. Yeah, yes. So can you like explain some, some, some of the techniques from your book, for example, um, the last law of attraction and how can we make use of these techniques to improve our lives? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the way to improve really to, to answer that quickly, is just by doing it because mm. when you do these methods and let's assume that you enjoy these methods, because if you don't enjoy them, don't do them, find one that you like. Mm. But when you do that, again, you're just consistently putting forth positivity and energy and, and emitting the signal of having what you want and being happy, which therefore instructs the universe to send it your way. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. I, I would say, just engaging in gratitude, physiologically speaking, studies have shown it increases confidence and improves sleep. It reduces anxiety. So even if this law of attraction stuff isn't real, just by doing something for five minutes a day, you're still giving yourself a huge win. Mm -hmm. With that said, one method uh, of many that I, that I like to do that one of my favorites from the book, I call the time-lapse method. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a, a gratitude method where you're gonna write down 15 things that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Five are from your past, five are things that you have in your present and five are things that you want in your future. Mm -hmm. But you're going to phrase all these things that you're grateful for in the present tense as if you have them now. That way, if you were to read that list to someone, they wouldn't know if you're telling the truth, if it happened, if it's going to happen. It's all in the present tense. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to take that list and you're going to jumble up the order. So maybe the first thing is a present and then there's a future and then there's a past, another future. Who knows? It's all mixed up. And then you go through that list one at a time, reading each thing. It could be out loud or in your head. There's no rules. And you just give yourself 20 or 60 seconds to feel gratitude for that thing. And the really cool thing about this technique and this strategy, because I'm a huge strategy guy, um, two thirds of that list is real. It either has happened or is happening. And therefore the gratitude that you feel for that thing, mm -hmm. it has a certain level of confidence and certainty and power and enthusiasm and energy that just can't be manipulated and it can't be replicated. It's legitimate. It's authentic. Mm -hmm. But because we as humans psychologically don't downshift very easily, you've, um, you've sprinkled in five future things. That confidence, that certainty will carry over into the gratitude that you're feeling for those things as well. Therefore, you've found a way to emit a really powerful signal to your mind or the universe or both, depending on your beliefs, of having the things that you want while simultaneously feeling good about the things that you already have. Mm -hmm. So it's a win across the board, but it's a strategic, a strategic way to also inject and invite more of those good things coming to you. Yes. So if I could practice that right now, I'll just say one thing I'm grateful for, for the, in the presence. I'm grateful that I'm speaking with Andrew Karp right now. That's, what, that's the one way to say that, right? Nice. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, so here's the thing. I'm grateful for having this conversation with you right now, Toby. I'm grateful for all the conversations I have with all awesome podcast hosts. And mm -hmm. you notice that second one, is that about the present? Is that about the future? You can't mm -hmm. tell by the way I worded it, but I feel just as good about it. Yes, that's true. That's true. And how does this out, out of gratitude help us to, you know, anchor a mindset of great success? Like, So the thing about it is 
when when you're feeling grateful, like you are reaffirming and reinforcing both to your subconscious mind and the universe that you have what you want and that you're happy. And remember, like attracts like, you know, like frequencies. So when you're putting out those thoughts and emotions of happiness, you are attracting thoughts and emotions of and reasons to be happy and grateful more to you. Just mm -hmm. by being, you can be grateful for something about your love life and it can invite money. Mm -hmm. You could be grateful for something about your finances and it can invite love because the thing is the universe knows what you want because it hears you. It already knows all the times you've wished for things. Mm -hmm. So when you're putting yourself in that state of just saying for these five minutes a day, I'm going to feel good and, and emit that signal, emit that vibration and that frequency of being content of having what I want of being happy and fulfilled you are instructing the universe to give you those reasons and those things to continue to experience that and to have even better experiences of that. Yes. I think one other method you have in your book is the code red method. Can you, can you explain this method to me? So it's interesting. I don't think the code red method um, went into the book. That's a, that was a, a it's funny on my YouTube channel. I put, I give a uh, new methods on YouTube ah, yes, and yes. the, the code red method, if I remember correctly, because I, it's funny, I have fun just like, you know, coming up with fun ways of, of using excuses to feel good this way. Um, the code red method was kind of inspired by, there's like this old story of uh, this movie, A Few Good Men. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ever watch A Few Good Men, they say code red a million times. They say something <laughs> a million times. It almost becomes a running joke. And it became a thing where in colleges, it was like a drinking game. People would like, they'd have to take a shot or something whenever code, they'd watch the movie together and whenever they heard it, they had to do it. It was like a, a silly drinking game. I said, okay, what if we can do a healthy game where instead of taking a shot, you would watch a movie or you'd have something else where predictably it's going to be repeating over and over and over again. And you use that as your opportunity to try to be grateful for something. So if I was watching A Few Good Men, I would make note to myself, okay, every time I hear Code Red, I'm going to quickly think of something I'm grateful for. But by that same token, maybe um, I like Marvel movies. And every time, you know, the superhero throws a punch at the supervillain, that'll be my cue to think of something grateful. Or any, you know, I get on the phone with a friend and they always use the same expression in my mind. Every time they, get, they say that expression to me, they don't know I'm doing this, but I'm using that as my cue. You find something predictable and something easy that's going to be your cue and your reminder to be grateful. And you are basically um, reinforcing this idea of being more grateful on a more regular basis without having to come up with the, um, the wherewithal of remembering when to do it because you're going to be reminded through the circumstances that you place yourself in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's good. So, like, um, making like creating markers, for example, like, okay, whenever I know there's a particular kind of pattern, then using that kind of pattern to, um, be grateful for something at each point or time mm -hmm. of my day. Yeah, it's like you know any kind of way that you can install a reason or an excuse or a reminder to feel good, mm -hmm. you are doing yourself a huge service. Mm -hmm. And it could be a thing where, by the way, some people, we we have ways of getting in our own way without realizing it. So some people might say. I can't, I can't be bothered to think of something on the fly. I mean, one, I would say you should because you're working a very powerful muscle, but mm -hmm. if you don't have confidence, okay, well, what can we strategically do? Well, you know what? Write on a list, 20 things to be grateful for and keep that in your pocket. And then when that moment comes to be grateful, if you can't think of anything, you pull up the list and you pick something. Mm -hmm. There's always a way to have yourself prepared and ready to feel gratitude, which again, strategically, if nothing else is inviting more good things. That's, that's kind of like my outlook. And I like to go in that direction to help stay motivated and also help stay consistent. Yes. I am um, in the second chapter of your book, and it also go in, goes in line with, you know, being grateful or the art of gratitude. Um, you wrote about the importance of positive thoughts and habits, like you've also made, made mention of or, already. Um, can you explain once more about, um, can you explain the importance of positive thoughts and habits and how they affect everything that we are attracted to, everything that we, you know, we draw to ourselves as magnets? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we are creatures of habit. We're going to do whatever we do consistently on a regular basis, meaning if you're, if you're the type of person that complains, you're going to, not even realizing it, you're going to find and notice more ways and reasons to complain. Mm -hmm. But if you're grateful for things, you're going to find more reasons and excuses to be grateful. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is it's really important to understand that there's implications of either one and therefore recognize, okay, which one or w which habit do I want to create that I want to nurture that's going to work to my advantage, that's mm -hmm. going to bring happiness into my life, that's going to increase and improve my finances, improve my relationships, improve my health, improve my career, improve my business, improve whatever situation that I 
even if I'm viewing it as already great, it's great already, but I always want like, who, who says I can't get better? Who says I can't invite better? So it's all about saying, okay, I understand that humans are creatures of habit. We have thought patterns. We will go either positive direction or negative one. Let me observe myself. Let me recognize which one's gonna be the more advantageous. And then let me come up with a convenient user-friendly game plan for inviting this to continue. Again, you don't want this to be complicated. You don't want it to be a commitment. You don't want it to be a chore because once it becomes one of those things, even if you're engaging in the process, you're doing it while you're, you're gritting your teeth, you're kind of stressing your way through it and you don't even realize you're infusing negativity into what you think is a positive situation. You're kind of like, you know, you're fighting yourself. So the whole point is finding ways of doing this that feel good, that are enjoyable, that you look forward to because only then well, one, you'll be way more um, inspired to stay consistent, but two, you'll actually be doing positive, beneficial work for yourself in that moment rather than kind of getting in your own way. Yeah, that's true. But I'm thinking about, you know, this kind of world that we live in now, you know, it's filled with um, fake news or negativity or, you know, a lot of, um, you know, bad things on social media or around us generally. So how do you, you know, intentionally and consciously, you know, um, cultivate an, a, a positive habit or the act of having positive thoughts, you know, despite all the negativity around us? Yeah, yeah, it's like, how do you stay positive in the face of that, that nonstop barrage of bad news and all those other things, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so the thing is, and again, this, the beauty of this is everything depends on each person individually. Everyone mm. is their own unique way of doing it. So part of it becomes of like, who you are and what matches your personality. But to give you a few examples, mm -hmm. depending on your personality, one thing you might do is like, well, I'm grateful that in spite of all that bad news, my life's going pretty well. I am grateful for the opportunity and the understanding that every thought on this planet, every person can influence it positively or negatively. So I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to feel more gratitude, knowing that I'm not only serving myself, but I'm actually doing the world a favor. Mm -hmm. uh, another situation might be to ignore the news if you don't like it at all, you know, just put it away. Um, another way, you know, it's to kind of like reaffirm when you see somebody that is obviously coming from a lackful state, you'd say, you know what, that, you know, that, that sucks for them. I'm going to have a good th thought for them finding their way out of it. And as a way of inspiring that and contributing positively, I'm going to lead by example, even if I never meet them, mm -hmm. I'm going to lead by example by staying on the path for myself. Mm -hmm. And I just know that someone else will notice me doing this, that mm -hmm. they'll never say to me, they will be a stranger on the street but they might be that person that would have otherwise complained. So you're making a choice. You're making a decision to be your own guru, to lead by example, and to say in the face of all that, I can go down one of two roads. I can follow that and get more negative and hate the experience while contributing more negatively to the world. Or I can say, you know, no matter what's going on, there's things I'm in control of and things I'm not in control of. I am going to focus on the things that I can control to hopefully positively influence everything around me and benefit the things that I'm not in control of. I like that, like focusing on the things that I can, I can control, things that I'm in control of, things that are within my power or capacity to, yeah, to man, you know, not manipulate all, but to watch over or to, yeah, to change myself. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. And one, one funny thing is just to say, you know, human nature being what it is, w weirdly enough, we often don't do things for ourselves. We, we, we have trouble staying motivated for ourselves, but hmm. if you can try to adhere to something that's bigger than yourself, like fixing, like, you know, being a positive contribution and a positive influence on the world, it mm -hmm. might fuel you more. Like for me, one of the things, again, I strategically use as many as possible to keep me going. One thing that fuels me is saying, listen, this isn't just about me. It isn't about me at all. If mm -hmm. I can do this, if I can go down this path, imagine someone that I might help that, again, I'm never going to technically meet them. I'm never going to know them. They're never going to tell me their story, but I just know that I am making a difference in some small way, shape or form. You know, obviously we're in a, in a strange world right now where people aren't, you know, congregating in groups the same way that they used to. But one thing I used to suggest to people before, you know, back when everyone was going to stores more, uh, more consistently is, you know, take out a, a dollar bill or, or a note, like whatever your currency is yes, and write a little note uh, on, you know, um, on a sticky note that's inspiring to a complete stranger. Like, this dollar is your reminder that you are worth so much, or this is your indicator that something good is on the way to you. Or in case you're wondering if the universe loves you, here's a little demonstration or something nice, right? And you bundle up and you like hide it on the shelf. So someone, they, they're shopping, they pick up the shelf, they see the note and the dollar, of course they're taking the dollar. And then yeah. of course they're curious enough to read the note 
and you've made someone else's day right there. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for and thinking of opportunities to light someone up, even knowing that you'll never meet them, you will really help yourself and you will boost your self-esteem in ways that you could not imagine because all of a sudden, you know, if, if you've got a, a crooked tooth or, you know, you, you don't, you think you're too skinny or whatever, whatever judgment that you've thrown yourself that isn't even accurate, you're mm -hmm. going to be forgiving of yourself a lot more. And you're gonna be like, listen, I'm awesome. Look what I just did today. Yes. And then all of a sudden those things won't matter. And again, you're lifting yourself up and the world around you simultaneously. Hmm, I love that. I really love that. In order to get more love and positivity into your life, you have to spread more love and positivity to others. Yeah. And again, like, I mean, I, I seem so um, almost mechanical about the thing as I describe it this way, but I only describe it this way because it's useful to people. And when I say that, I mean, I am strategic. This is a strategy, but it's a strategy with a huge, authentic, genuine win on the tail end of it. I view joy as a strategy. People look at joy and happiness as this far off thing that they'll get to one day, they'll be happy when they'll, you know what I mean? But I, I would yeah. say, listen, the thing that you're gonna get to that is wonderful, it is a manifestation, it is a great result, but joy can also be a strategy, something mm -hmm. on the way where you can say, listen, I'm willing to receive and experience little pockets and packets of joy right now, mm -hmm. little gratitude for this thing and that thing. And they don't even realize they're actually tricking themselves into being happy in the moment, mm -hmm. which by the way, is not only speeding up the, um, the speed of their results, but it's also improving the quality of what, what it might be. There might be someone out there right now, they want a job promotion. If only they would find ways of being grateful right now in the moment using joy as a strategy, not only will they get offered that promotion, they'll get offered another job for more money with a better commute, with better employees doing something that they believe in way better than you could have imagined because that's the thing. If you give the universe the opportunity to pleasantly surprise you in both quality and speed of what you get, it often will do so. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. And talking about, you know, um, attracting things to yourself, you know, people talk about, you know, visualization or manifestation, as you also mentioned already. How, how do you do this? How do you visualize effectively to, you know, get things to yourself or attract um, positivity or, or love or whatever you want to yourself? Well, I, I give myself permission to to let visualization be whatever it might be because some people they've convinced themselves that it has to be a dramatic vivid thing mm. and it has to be a certain way they've got to be viewing their dream from a certain angle like they again they'll tell themselves different things for me i'm willing to close my eyes and and some days it'll be more detailed and some days it'll be less detailed but also some days if i'm just not in a visualizing mood i'll script and scripting is basically just you know um, journaling about your life in the present tense as if you're already living your dream life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you know, I'm talking about, listen, I'm so grateful. I finally hit a million YouTube subscribers. I finally sold a million books. This is the best thing ever. I'm, I'm loving all these emails that are coming in. I'm writing this down and what I don't realize, well, I do, but what people don't realize is you actually are visualizing. You can't help. You don't see the images in the same way, but you are visualizing because you have to access your visual cortex in order to describe those things. So you've tricked yourself into visualizing and you're still having a good time while you're doing it and you're emitting that signal of positivity. So uh, my, I know long-winded answer is don't get stuck in the preconceived notion of what visualization is supposed to be or has to be because it could be anything. As long as you're feeling good while thinking about what you have or what you want or both on any level, whether it's a little good or really good, you've already won. Oh, so it, does, it doesn't have to be like, you know, pictures on a wall or in like a picture of a Ferrari or a, a big mansion or kids or something. Yeah, it, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be that. Okay. And, and I like the way you connect it all. Like, you know, scripting, I, I love that because I also enjoy writing. So it's like, you know, being grateful for something in the future, like you said earlier, like writing it down, like I'm grateful that I have 1 million subscribers. I'm grateful that uh, my podcast is number one or something like that. Yeah. And that way yeah. I mean, if, if I'm you and I'm scripting, I'd mm -hmm. be like, you know, I, I'm so happy and grateful now that this podcast is really taking off. I, I love the emails I continue to get from people. Mm -hmm. I love the stories of how they're using, they're cherry picking from different episodes and different guests, all the ways that they're improving their lives. I love how I keep hearing from new people that said, hey, I never heard of you before, but my friend sent me your podcast and I'm so grateful to be there. Mm -hmm. I love I love how, how great my equipment is right now. I love how it perfectly captures my voice. I love the quality of my internet connection. I love the quality of my cans. 
that's headphones for people that aren't uh, <laughs> aren't, aren't in podcast speak. Um, yeah. I, I love the the awesome guests that I keep finding. I love the guests that are finding me. I mm. love the opportunity that I keep getting to explore new areas and go deeper. And I love the fact that it's getting better and better every single day. And most importantly, I love the fact that every single day it's still fun. It's always something I look forward to. It's always something I'm excited by. It's always something that puts a smile on my face. That would be me scripting for you yeah. if I wanted like podcast success. Yes, I'm good. I was going to listen to this all over again and write it down and then script it to my head. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. But you know, um, some people complain sometimes and say, okay, I've been trying this law of attraction, you know, techniques or method, but it's not working for me. What do you think could be going wrong? Um, so a couple of things. Well, one, I, I guarantee you they are, again, they're doing the method to get the result mm. rather than just doing the method for the sake of enjoying the method. Mm. And also, and I, I know people will hate to hear this because I, I still hate to hear this, even though I'm the one saying it, you, you've got to be patient. And I don't mean patient and like, you know, just get over yourself. I mean, patient strategically, because mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to find a way of enjoying life in the meantime, with the understanding that even when you get that thing that you want, you're going to want something else anyway, you're always going to want something. So your best thing that you should do is say, listen, I'm going to visualize good things but I'm gonna invite the universe to pleasantly surprise me with something better, something faster. Maybe something will take an extra month, but it'll actually be way better, it'll be worth it to me. Like being very open-ended. I think if people are open-ended and are just more committed to experiencing gratitude for just five minutes a day and just saying, listen, what can I do to be happy in the meantime? What can I do to enjoy my life in the meantime? It's gonna be way better for them as opposed to what we all find ourselves in the trap of doing is getting really impatient saying, where's my stuff and just pushing too hard for it. Like me, here's the funny thing. Um, as of this recording, I have close to 1,900 YouTube subscribers. Oh, if someone yeah. said, hey, Andrew, um, I'm, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to wave a magic wand. I'm going to give you a million subscribers tomorrow. I'd actually say no. And the reason I'd say no is right now, the way my infrastructure is built, I can still answer emails with people that write in. I can still engage with my audience in that way. Mm -hmm. I have to build. I have to evolve and I have to grow to the point where when I am at a million subscribers, I'm still serving my audience on a high level. I don't feel like I've abandoned them. So if you mm -hmm. said, hey, Andrew, I'll give you 50,000 subscribers, like, yeah, I'll take 50,000 because I'm confident with 50,000, I'll still be able to serve the people that are emailing me and I'll feel good about it. Like, I'm not saying no to this abundance. I'm just saying I am in no rush to get to that million because I'm enjoying just the 1,900 people right now. Like, think about that. That's 1,900 unique souls that enjoyed my content enough that they click that subscribe button and they devote their time and energy to be looking for an email notification and watching my videos. How could I not be grateful for 300 people, for 100 people to say nothing of the million, to say nothing of 50,000, which I'll take tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Well, my point is I will get a million, I have no doubt, but I'm in no rush. I'm enjoying the subscribers I have in the meantime. And by the way, because I'm enjoying that, strategically that is pulling in not only the million in a faster way, but in a better way. So that when I do get there, I will have very easily set up my infrastructure that I can continue to serve my viewers and my readers at a very high level. Yes, that's awesome. I, and I really enjoy the way this, um, you know, this conversation is going actually because it helps me to reflect on my personal development, like l l letting me to know the importance of patience, letting me know, to know the importance of, you know, um, I'm creating positive habits, positive thoughts, and also uh, allow me to, you know, know how very important it is to be grateful for everything, for the past, for the present, and for the future. So, but are there like some things I have to get rid of? For example, maybe ego or whatever that could, you know, stop me from getting what I want in life. Like, are there some mm. habits I'm to, I'm to get rid of? Yeah, well, you know, it's like, you, know, you talk about like the ego, the ego is, this, you know, this part of your mind that, all it cares about is that you're alive. That's mm -hmm. its one, it, it's one goal that this, and but this, by the way, is the ego as I define it. it. It only cares that you're alive. And that means right now, somebody, you know, whatever money problems you're having, whatever relationship problems, even whatever health problems you're having, mm -hmm. all the ego knows is that you are alive in this moment and it doesn't want to risk the status quo. This, by the way, is why people will learn about law of attraction. They'll start to do the methods, they'll start to get results, and then they'll stop. They'll be talked out of it by the ego because the ego loves them and it's, it's a misguided attempt to protect them but it doesn't want to risk what might happen if things improve because there might be someone out there right now who wants to be rich and famous but for all your ego knows is when you become famous you're going to get a stalker and that's a threat to your survival 
for all your ego knows is when you get rich, you're going to get family coming out of the woodwork, trying to take your house from you. And that's a threat to your survival. So the ego's like, listen, I don't know what's going to happen when my person gets all this stuff, but I do know they're alive. I know they're alive right now and I'm not going to let them go any far for, farther from that. So, you know, it's, un- it's important to understand that, you know, it's, it's a misguided way of doing it, but with that understanding, this is why you want to find methods that you really enjoy, because when you enjoy them enough that you could be consistent, that the ego can't talk you out of it, those mm-hmm. thoughts and emotions are feeding images to your subconscious mind, which is way more powerful than your ego, which will do a lot of the heavy lifting of governing your actions and emitting the signal to the universe to get you the things that you want. Yeah. So for someone out there, who, for example, still is not convinced, like, okay, I, I don't believe in the law of attraction. Can that person still benefit from, you know, the, the, the lessons that law of attraction teaches or from mm-hmm. the techniques that it teaches? Yeah. yeah. So I always liken an example to uh, lifting weights to get muscles. Mm-hmm. Very oversimplified, right? Yeah. Well, let me give you two explanations as to how this actually works. Explanation number one is you lift weights and you go to sleep at night and the muscle fairy comes and waves a magic wand and poof, you wake up the next day with more muscles, right? (laughs) Explanation number two is when you are lifting weights and you're working out, you're putting so much stress on your body that your muscles are actually tearing in little areas. Mm. And what your body does is it heals and responds by filling in those gaps with more muscle fiber, hence more muscles. Now I butchered that explanation, that scientific explanation, but I am sure that most people say, well, Andrew, that's the answer between the two. To which I would say, Actually, unless you're a personal trainer or a physical therapist, it doesn't matter. What does matter is you lift weights, you get muscles. You put in X, you get Y. And by that same token, whether or not you believe in the law of attraction, if you make the commitment to engage in a simple gratitude or visualization or scripting process for five minutes a day, you will see things happen. And by the way, when they do happen, Mm -hmm. don't give me credit. Don't give my book credit. Don't give the universe credit. Don't give the law of attraction credit. Don't give anything that credit but at least recognize that you did this thing and you got that result so that you were inspired to keep doing that thing to keep getting results. And P.S. If I'm either lying right now or I'm deluded, studies have shown physiologically speaking that when you experience gratitude, you will improve your sleep, you'll increase your confidence, you'll reduce your anxiety. In other words, there are benefits to just experiencing the gratitude that have nothing to do with the law of attraction explanation. Just doing that for five minutes a day, you are already giving yourself a huge win but you might also be pleasantly surprised by other things that come afterwards. Wow, that's a great answer. That's a wonderful answer. So for someone out there who is like seeking for um, encouragement, if you could like maybe reflect on your life right now, what word of encouragement or what closing remark will you give a listener out there who is like trying to, you know, get more positivity into his or life or get more goodness or, you know, achieve greatness or achieve his or goals in life? Yeah, so I'll say this. It's actually a, a little bit uh, probably surprising. It won't be very uh, Tony Robbins inspirational, but it will be real. Um, no one's life is perfect. We all have situations where um, we're not as happy as we should or could be. Mm. My message to people is be strategic. Understand that even when life is, is hold, it feels like it's holding you down, mm. the best, most advantageous, most strategic thing that you can do for yourself is find a way of infusing positive thoughts or emotions for a few minutes a day with the understanding that that is going to be a key piece of the process to getting you out of whatever challenge is holding you down. The mm. thing is, again, you, right now you're thinking like, how am I ever going to get out of this mess? People think that that's a, a curse. That's a gift. Not knowing how you're going to do it means you can't figure it out, means you could leave it up to the universe, means when you're doing those uh, gratitude methods, maybe an idea of inspiration will come to you. And when it does, you'll act on it. But in the meantime, just say to yourself, listen, something I've got to do some way. I've got to, I have some agency here of making my life better. What can I do in this moment to do so? Oh, you mean I can do five minutes a day of gratitude? That's the hard work. That's pretty easy. Of course, I'm up for that. So this is just a reminder to people like, listen, Life isn't perfect, but it can be way better than you ever imagine if you give yourself permission to strategically engage in a process of feeling not even dramatically good, but just a little good for five minutes every single day Mm -hmm. and seeing what happens. Because think about the last year. The last year you haven't done this. Where are you right now? Okay. Well, what if a year from now you're the same place and you were doing this? You haven't really lost anything. You have nothing to lose, but everything to gain by just going for five minutes a day and feeling good. That would be the, um, you know, a little bit uh, in more in your face um, advice, but hopefully helpful advice to anyone out there listening right now. Yes, that's awesome. That's great. So um, for listeners out there or for my friends also that are listening, um, who loves to 
get more from you because maybe this episode is not enough for them. How can they get across to you? How can they stay connected with you? Yeah, well, thanks so much for asking. I mean, I have two very easy links. Um, the first one, uh, lastlawofattractionbook.com will mm -hmm. auto forward to the Amazon listing. You can get the book in Kindle or paperback or audiobook if you prefer. But if you don't want to pull out your wallet, that's okay also. I've got free content. My YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash Andrew Cap. It's K-A-P. Um, that has, you know, I teach, again, like the Code Red method. I teach new methods. I'll interview law of attraction experts. And I have a few other fun surprises there as well. So whether they're spending a few bucks on the book or they're looking at the YouTube content for free it is my sincere wish and intention that my content serves them in some way, shape or form and inspires them to serve themselves better. Great. I'm going to place all this, all this information in the show notes. So anyone who's interested could just copy or click on it and get across to Andrew Cap's information or um, materials. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything I've, I've been able to learn from you. Um, in this episode. I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. Toby, thank you for having me. And thank you so much for the intentionality and warmth of your questions. Um, I think your audience is really lucky to have you and I'm sure it's going to grow from here. And it's been my pleasure and honor to be on the show today. Thank you.